Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Deron with DeronSupply.com where I help you design smarter, not harder. And this is the first episode in a new series that I think will be a ton of fun. One of the many joys of my career has been learning a ton of different graphic styles for different client projects and personal projects. And so trying out new techniques is a great way to practice and hone in on your design skills and also to add some unique techniques to your design tool belt. So in these videos, I think it would be extremely cool to take the fun of designing a band tee and make it even more interesting by designing it in a different style than the band would usually be associated with. Today's adventure is going to be taking one of my favorite bands of all time, Led Zeppelin, and designing for them through the lens of new metal. So obviously there's overlap in the style of pretty much all forms of rock, but Led Zeppelin being more of a classic, sometimes psychedelic or bluesy rock band doesn't clash too much with the style of new metal. So here's what Led Zeppelin tees can usually look like. Very classic vintage rock tee-esque, uh, somewhat flashier colors and also usually an orderly composition. They've also got pretty calm imagery versus Nu Metal, which usually has more of a grunge and imperfect aesthetic. And so Nu Metal isn't really as hardcore as some other genres like heavy metal or death metal. It's sort of more influenced by that DIY and punk aesthetic. And it also kind of brings that aesthetic and sort of grungy feel into the 2000s, which is obviously where a lot of sort of digital techniques become more prevalent. New Metal obviously exists on a spectrum, but I wouldn't say that it has that really intense and dark feel that other genres like heavy metal, death metal, and hardcore aesthetic would have. But it's still a really fun niche that takes a lot of inspiration from many different places like hip hop, metal obviously, grunge, and so on. I would say my favorite New Metal band is probably Linkin Park, and I think they have the most defined aesthetic out of all the bands so i'm definitely going to be taking a lot of inspiration from them and their aesthetic for this design again this will be a series so before i start make sure you like and subscribe i post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer now let's get to it so i started off with the led zeppelin logo obviously amazing logo but it's going to be tough to make it hardcore because it's such a nice looking and friendly piece of type so we're gonna have to grunge it up for sure then i had to bring in that classic angel imagery that's pretty widespread across zeppelin merch but i didn't want it to be the main face of the composition so i arranged it sort of cut off by the logo and now it's time to grunge this up and since i'm taking inspiration from lincoln park I think a spray paint look would be super cool. So I did that by merging the logo composite all together with the black background. And then I add some grain patterns to overlay on that. I'm using the grain patterns from my Vintone pack, uh, but this can just be done using camera raw grain on a gray layer. So then I add a threshold on top of everything and I set that grain pattern to overlay and duplicate it a ton of times to really ingrain it within the graphic. And you see once I blur the graphic here, just how nicely that grain pattern comes into play, of course, with the use of the threshold adjustment above it. And make sure you stick till the end for a more in-depth explanation on that. So I decided to use field blur on this logo, which is a nice little modular glow option in Photoshop. Photoshop, it's in the blur gallery and it lets you blur your image based on points that you set. You can set different blur values for each of those points so you get a really cool kind of mesh of different intensity of blurs on the image. And now we're seeing this pretty much take on that spray painted look in real time. Very cool stuff. Now I want to finish selling the uh, spray paint look so I'm using this brush pack that I found to add in some droplets here and there and later on I'm going to blur those two to blend it more with the logo. And cool, this is nice already but I thought it needed some texture. So I'm dragging in some graffiti textures from the wild which I found I don't know, somewhere online, probably creative market. I'm just messing with the blend modes here to incorporate them better within the graphic. Now it's looking still a bit too clean for my liking and I wanna give it a darker vibe. And I'll do that using color. So I'll make two duplicates of the logo, one of them super grunged up and one of them only slightly grunged up. And I layer them on top of each other with the top one being a red color and that gives it a darker vibe and some more depth. And I also set the bottom one to a dark gray to match the red and also get more of a grungier feel on this graphic. Again, stick to the end to see a slower explanation of all this. Now it's time to add some imagery in here. So there's this photo of the band that has a cool mysterious vibe, if only Mr. Jimmy over here wasn't smirking. But in any case, I drag that in and I also use the same setup that I had before for the spray look. So that's just a ton of grain overlays and threshold. I've actually got a whole tutorial on that if you want to check it out. And I did a little bit of field blur on this graphic as well just to make it match with the rest of the graphic some more. So pretty much blurred the whole image using field blur and then I layer mask that in into certain places so it's not too overwhelming of an effect. The image is looking good but now I want to frame it. So I'm going to take a grunge brush or create a grunge brush by 
using one of the graffiti brushes, but I also have a tutorial on making grunge brushes if you want to check that out. And all I'm doing is pretty much cranking up the rotation jitter on this brush, and that's just going to make it more realistic as a brush so it's not the same pattern uh, repeating over the frame. And now I just paint a really messy frame on a new layer around the image. Like I said earlier, the new metal aesthetic sort of takes a bit after the DIY punk stuff, so messy framing, messy composition, uh, but it all works out just fine. I also wanted to throw in this blueprint image that I found on Google, because uh, line work like this is used from time to time in new metal merch and especially Linkin Park stuff, so I added that in, I thresholded it, and then I used a layer mask to paint that in in a few obscure parts of the graphic. Just a nice little touch there. I also ended up thinning out the frame to match the blueprint more. Lastly, I wanted to make one more reference to the iconic Led Zeppelin Angel, and I had found a pretty cool version of it that looked even cooler when I thresholded it. So I added that in, and it kind of wasn't working, so I thought maybe, what if I just have it overlaid? in red, sort of like how I did the logo up top. And that way it doesn't clash too much with the image of the band, but also you can sort of see it slightly coming through in the graphic. So that's what I did. And again, I merged out two versions of the graphic. One of them was super grunged up with the angel in it. And one of them had no grunge and, or actually a little bit of grunge, uh, but no angel. And then I layered those with the grunge one as the red color on top. So at the end, I had two versions of this that I really liked. One with the logo fully in red and one with it layered with the gray and the grunge. Not sure which one I liked more. I also thought that the graphic looked good without the angel all the way up top. It's a simpler composition, but also works. So I threw both of those versions on my t-shirt mockup, which is available on my site, DuranSupply.com, and boom. Here are the finals that we came up with. I think the new metal aesthetic is sort of hard to pinpoint. It's definitely a very wide ranging aesthetic, but I really like what we came up with. So as promised, I wanna explain two techniques that I thought y'all might wanna see slower. So first, the spray paint stuff, super simple. Once you have your graphic or logo or text ready, you're just gonna wanna make a duplicate merge of it with your background. So I'm gonna duplicate my background layer here and I'll merge that with my text or I'll make a duplicate merge with Command Alt E. If you want, you can turn that into a small object uh, so you can tweak it later. I'm gonna throw some gauge and on this right now just so you can see the effect better but this is not an actual step in the process then you just want to add some grain so i have my grain patterns from my vintone template uh, but these are really just gray layers with noise applied to them so if you want to make one of these just make a new 50 percent gray layer and throw some noise on there then you're going to want to set that to overlay and that's going to make it interact nicely with the graphic and if you want you can duplicate this of course the more you duplicate it the heavier the effect is going to be and then once you add the threshold adjustment layer on top of all that the effect really starts to come together and of course it's all modular you can play with the settings here so on the graphic i just did i opted for a field blur instead of a gaussian blur so i'm going to turn that one off here and you can just go into filter blur blur gallery and now we have this effect completely live and you can set points here for where you want the blur to be and how strong you want the blur so you find a nice combination of blurs that uh, sort of emulates a spray paint effect and boom that's pretty much that if you want to have this uh, separate from the background on its own layer you just want to group all these layers including the grain and the threshold make a duplicate layer so command alt e to merge and duplicate then i'll hide the rest of this and just take my magic wand select out the black and now we have our spray and painted logo separate from the background and of course you can change the color do whatever you want with this uh, mess around with the layer styles pretty fun stuff now let me show you how i made that layered grunge effect with the red and the gray below it so i have this whole graphic underneath the processing layers which is just the grain overlays and the threshold effect all the way on top and then i have this group of textures here which i overlaid on top of the graphic that i can turn on or off and then obviously i have the actual logo and stuff down here so once you have that you're gonna want to go on top of all these layers on top of the processing layers as well and just make a flattened duplicate of everything. So that's Command, Option, Shift, E on your keyboard. And that's going to make a flattened duplicate as you see here, which I'm gonna turn off for now, and then we'll go back into our layers here. And now I want to add even more textures in here. So I have this group over here, Knockout, which is just pretty much a ton of more textures. So I'll turn that on, and then I'll do the same thing, rinse and repeat. I'll go to the top here, and Command, Option, Shift, E to make another duplicate. And I'll put this layer on top of the first merge layer that we did. I'll turn both of those on, and now I'm gonna delete the background out of this new duplicate layer with my magic wand. So I'll select out the black, and now we have these in two separate layers. So now I can go on this top layer and set a color overlay to whatever color I want. And we can see that that pretty much completes the really cool layered grunge effect, which just adds a lot more depth to the graphic. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for you for today. If you got any value from this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I post videos like this every week. Let me know if you like this new series and the formatting of it. 
If you have any suggestions, please leave that in the comments down below. I was thinking of maybe doing something like Nirvana in a Y2K aesthetic for the next one, so you kind of get the idea here. Go subscribe to my mailing list as well at the bottom of my website for exclusive discounts and free design assets. Now, I know you want some free stuff, so go ahead and do that. Today is also the last day of my Cyber Monday sale, so head over to DuranSupply.com and pick up some assets for 30% off, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.